Okay, and hello to uh, whoever is joining us on line as well. Oh, it looks like that's there's like three of us in this room online. Okay, um, and I guess I'll put the screen share back up. Well, I can let's see. Their screen, PowerPoint. There we go. Okay, problems hopefully averted. Um, wow, this is a nice small group here. <laughs> uh, there's 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 a couple of people online. Eddie, are you going to monitor that as usual? Because yes. I will immediately forget and stop looking at my screen. Um, so uh, I guess uh, just I wanted to start out and kind of like know who's here. I've talked with you about this before, but. Um, if uh, you guys just introduce yourselves, so, so I guess all four of us know who know who's who's here, um, and your name, your department, and uh, why you are here, like why you wanted to come to this. And uh, same question to uh, those joining online that Eddie can uh, chime in on. So, John, you want to start? John Evers, um, Operations Research and Engineering Manager. My focus is systems engineering. Um, <laughs> I've uh, Taught a couple semesters as an adjunct and then you full time faculty. So congratulations. Spun up on that. But thanks. Worked in industry for a lot of years, so getting familiar with the academic environment. Okay, and with what you just what you just explained, and I'm in Meadows, so a lot of those words I'm not sure where they fit in. Or is that are you based out of Cox or out of the engineering school? Lyle. Okay. Cool. Alan. Uh, I'm Alan Luigi, and I'm John. to finish the entirety of the class with their mis-expectation of what the class was going to be done. Okay. So the high level of the entirety of the class. Okay. Is it anxiety about the grade specifically, or like you kind of sound like it's anxiety because they signed up for a different class than they thought well, they were I taking? <laughs> okay. There are things that I've discovered since her talk, like in spring, mm -hmm. that I share with the group to see everybody else in the students. And that my colleague, Nicole, and that, you know, basically said she's done, she's sort of bailing mid semester. So that I can you know, pass on to the group to see if I can address. But she's, she's a second year teacher. She's just kind of started. Okay. And the publications of something like this only become clear over time as the semester goes. So like yesterday, I discovered, oh, there's a training that's coming. And I have to deal with that. So it's a continual revelation issue. That stem from some degree of misunderstanding of what program is, and uh, some degree of fear. Okay. All right. Uh, I. This is peripheral to this topic, but I just have like my, by bailing. Do you mean like she's not grading? She's quitting the school? She's like no, 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 no. <laughs> she's just probably like this, this contract grading. It's not going to be enforced for her class. Okay, so she, she was using a contract grading system and she's just going to sort of swerve back to a more traditional system. Okay, gotcha. Then, yeah, that, that'd be a great thing. Hopefully, we can bring some stuff back to her. And, Addie, do you have uh, feedback from? Yeah, so we have uh, Kendall that is uh, tried to joining us. She's our GA, but she's also an instructor in the English department. Okay. She's joined to my different type of grading. Uh, we have somebody that is trying to find this building, try to get here in person, okay. to give directions. So there's two, I'm not saying that there's two buildings here. I'm trying to say like across from Fort Hall. I, the, we were, so I, I told Alan, uh, like cor Southeast corner of Dyer and Airline, because I wouldn't have known where Ford Hall was either, because that's also <laughs> relatively new. Arlen, airline. <laughs> I, I think that's the actual cross street, yeah. Uh, university and airline, but like you're right, it's actually directly across from McFarland. But McFarland kind of breaks up; it goes partway through campus, not all the way. So if you know where University is, kind of like over there. Also, the code for this building—I don't know why it's MSAS for something that starts with Francis. Yeah. 
Okay. It buys the ones part. Okay. This is also one of those things where you learn about the. Uh, I'm trying to think what the right right word is, but sort of like different parts of institutional knowledge within the institution, because like everything I do is over on the far west side of campus. We're all in Hillcrest, so like this is all just sort of like nebulous area to me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it is. And it's a new building. It's like double. Um, okay, well, hopefully uh, whoever's on their way here will find you. Will find here. Uh, Eva told me yesterday she was going to be here, so hopefully she'll make it as well. Also, Karen says that she's the CT director. She's online. She'd okay. like to talk to welcome Mark back. Okay, thanks, Karen. Um, and I actually wanted to thank uh, for the benefit of the rest of you. Thank Karen and Addie and CT for uh, having us do this because uh, they were nice enough to let me do some presentations in the spring and then talking with Alan and some other people over the past semester, there was more interest in this. So they were nice enough to let me do another session. So thanks. Um, uh, so I'm, I want to do a quick, just kind of see where we are on this. Um, and Addie, if you can sort of represent the people online here. Um, so who knows what like specs or contract grading is? I know you have some sense. John? No. no. Okay. And people online? Just trying to get a sense because I don't want to like rehash a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and are you, are you doing a version of it this semester in your class? Okay. And that's where the train wreck is coming. <laughs> okay. You see the light of the train coming. Okay. I think it was Eva that's trying to find. Okay. The room, so just, just okay. Cool. Hopefully, she can find her way here. And she is. Uh, so she is um, in biology, and she is doing a whole course specs grading this semester as well. So um, the the session we did in the spring was kind of like introductory, um, partly me evangelizing, proselytizing, partly explanation, partly some examples. Um, what I want to do today that's a little different, I think will be helpful for you, but I don't want to leave you behind here being kind of new to this is just very quick overview of what specs grading is. So we're all on the same page, like with the sort of concept. And I think like actually discussing what's going on in your specific class and examples and like, where are the problems and how can we work around those? You get a good sense of what, how the system works anyway. Um, and then I also have a, uh, kind of exercise we can do if we have time, which I think we, we will, um, of like things to think about as you're kind of developing a course and translating it to that. So here's the uh, very quick overview, which is a super condensed version of the presentation I did in the spring. Um, and uh, also, if you really want all the detail, like read that book, that's kind of the foundational text of this, if that makes sense for something that's fairly new. Um, and uh, there's some stuff in there I agree with, some stuff I disagree with, but it really gives a kind of overview of like what this came out of in the whole process. Um, and I can send these links uh, or Eddie can to everyone who's registered if you're interested. Um, okay, so what is specs grading? Here's just the basic concept of what we're what we're talking about. Um, so the core idea of this um, is covered up by my little view here. Let's just move that out of the way. Um, is that assignments are graded? Basically, everything's pass fail. So you're not doing percentages on things. You're not scoring like, oh, this got a 72%, this was 75%. It's like things either accomplished it, they passed, or they didn't, and they failed. Um, hello. Sorry, you find there's it. no room numbers. MCAS doesn't exist on the campus map. I was about to send that <laughs> thing. Anyway, sorry. It's all right. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Thanks. Do you want to introduce yourself, too? We just kind of oh, yeah. did that and got started. Biology and Mark talking to do sex grading this semester. And, amazing. and any problems are all my fault. No, so. no, no. He helped me with you ahead of time, make sure there weren't any issues. So. Okay. And so Alan is also doing a version of that this semester. John is new to this. So I'm doing a quick overview of like the process, but I want to spend most of the time like just discussing like yeah. how it's going and what things you're seeing and running into. Okay. So this is really the core idea of it. And if you kind of keep that in your head, everything is just some variation of that. That's the, that's the ultimate idea. Um, and I think I clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. Um, there's a lot of different variations on this. Um, there were two other things I did want to highlight aside from that sort of core idea of everything pass fail. One is usually in this, there's some sort of version of students being able to resubmit work. So you submit something and it got an unsatisfactory or fail. There's some way to redo that. 
that's not necessarily unlimited. It's not necessarily in every project, but there's some aspect of that in most versions of spec grading. Um, and the other thing is often, and this is, I think where you're talking about contract grading, which I would sort of define as like kind of a subset of specs grading. Um, often there is something where it's not everybody does all the same work. So you have some autonomy in like, I'm going for an A, I'm going to have to do these assignments. I'm going for a C, I'm going to do these assignments. Um, and that could be uh, the type of assignments. It could be the number of assignments. It could be the scale of the assignments that you do, all that sort of thing. Um, okay, and the sort of brief overview of why people might do this um, and the reasons, again, I'm sort of an evangelist for this is if it works, it really is about like, did they really learn something? Did they show they can do this rather than did they memorize something for a test that they pass this right now? Um, it focuses in on what are the objectives we're trying to do and give students chances to develop those fail and hopefully ultimately achieve it. Um, it allows for setting a clear and high bar. So one of the things that's nice if students can redo things is you can say like, this is what I expect of a project. And instead of a normal thing where someone might do it, like, yeah, I kind of half-assed it. I know I'll get some credit and I'll get 65% and I can sort of skate by. You can say like, no, you got zero. You have to hit this bar to do it. But then they have the chance if they don't do it to um, accomplish that. Can be lower strikes, lower stats for each assignment. We'll talk about what's going on in your class. Um, but uh, again, these are sort of the theoretical the way this can work uh, when uh, if everything's sort of coming together and working right. Um, I like this. You're asking the students to figure out, I want to go for this grade, and it's their, responsib their responsibility to do that. And if your system is set up well, anybody who wants to and is willing to put in the work can get an A, or anyone can get a B. And if somebody's like, I'm a second semester senior, I'm just trying to get out of here, I need three credits, like I'm fine with a D plus, they can do that and not do the extra work it would take to get an A. Um, but there's a lot less of the like, well, why did you give me this grade? It's like they know what they're going for and what it's going to take exactly to get that. Um, can allow schedule flexibility. This is a huge potential source, source of stress. I will share some examples from this spring, um, but it can allow some schedule flexibility depending on how you're setting up uh, your various assignments. Um, grading time, I find more useful. I teach in film, so a lot of the things I'm doing are creative work where I'm giving creative feedback on it. Um, and I would much rather be telling them like, hey, here's where I think your ideas aren't quite working and how we can you know, improve this or work on this for the next thing, rather than trying to figure out, is this a 62 or a 63 or whatever percentage and stuff like that. Um, okay, conceptual challenges with this. Uh, and some of these might relate to what you guys are dealing with. Um, one is it's just new. If you've been, so in some sense, John, this might be easier for you not having taught for a very long time. For those of us who have been in academia forever, we're used to doing things a certain way and it's a pretty different style of grading and takes some getting used to and the students are not used to it. Um, every class I've done with specs grading, I have to spend some time at the beginning of the semester explaining how it's going to work and what it's going to do. And generally they like the idea of it, but they need it explained and they need to kind of come to understand it. It's not natural for them. And you have to have some grace with them and with yourself. The first time you, you try this, it's not going to go perfectly. There's going to be something that didn't go right or an assignment like, man, I really did not design this well. And you have to have some flexibility and grace with yourself and grace with the students when it's your fault that something screwed up. Um, the second one was something I was just thinking about today that uh, I didn't mention in the spring, but I think is actually important. This is my perception. This is not like official literature. I think this is really hard to do at a class you've never taught before. I think you need to have a sense of like, what is this class? What am I really trying to get out of it? What are the usual problems and challenges students have in it, as opposed to building something from scratch? I'm teaching a class this semester that I have never taught before. That's actually never existed before. It's a new class in our department. And I tried building it with specs grade. And I'm like, I just don't know enough about what this class is going to be and where the pitfalls are going to be to do to even do this. So I'm doing it with a sort of hybrid scheme, but it's more towards a traditional grading. Um, it's easier for some types of class and content than others than I think, and although I think you can do it with everything. Um, and I don't think this is a bad thing, but I think it really requires us to think about like, what do these grades mean? As opposed to like, well, I give them these assignments and I grade everything. And at the end I add it up and they ended up with an 83 and that's a B or whatever. You really have to think about like, what what does it mean for me for someone to get an A? Because you actually have to define that. What does it mean to get that versus a B or a C? Okay, and then practical challenges. Scheduling and resources. 
Um, I think you'll have something to share about this. <laughs> but when you're giving people redos or flexibility with their time, uh, students aren't always the best at managing those and kind of using them efficiently and effectively. Uh, you really need to keep up with the grading. If you're giving people a chance to redo things, you can't take something, hang on to it for three weeks, and by the time there's, you give it back and they're supposed to be redoing it, the class has moved on. Um, there can be more to keep track of. Our existing structure on Canvas is not designed for this, um, and you can make it work for that. There are lots of tricks you can do, but you're kind of like fighting against a current that's going the other way. Um, and so you, you, the grading, the actual logistics of just like putting grades in and getting that information to students usefully uh, can be a little more tricky. And you need to have very specific guidelines and assignments, which again, I don't think is a bad thing. I think that's great no matter what kind of grading you're doing, but you can't get away with sloppiness here where you can with uh, sort of traditional grading. Okay, John, is that helpful as sort of overview of what this is, sort of? Okay, so um, what I want to do is uh, just like go through some, go through some examples because we had some people who are trying this. And um, I also tried this on a class that I hadn't done it with before in the spring. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, probably a productive place to go at this point. So uh, if I'd asked you to actually have a little bit of something to kind of prepare to talk about, that's okay. So um, I brought copies of my syllabus and one of my specs grading examples. Um, my class is an upper level biology course. All my students are going to med school, dental school, PA schools, higher level. Schooling after this, it's an elective course, it's anatomy and physiology. And for probably 10 years, I've used a clinical case studies approach where every week they have to do a clinical case study. I ask every doctor, dentist I meet about their coolest patient, and they always have two or three great stories that I can adapt as a case study. And that means they're Google proof because they're unique and you can't just look it up. So that's kind of hard to see. Kiddos are really good at Googling anything, and so you have to make it a little bit more people group that way. And can um, you just, ex like, I know from talking with you this spring, can you yeah. explain just a little more what a clinical case study is that you're asking them to do? Sure. So, and I brought an example of that as well. So there's a patient, there's something wrong with them, and they have to go through a series of questions that kind of leads them to a conclusion of how you treat this patient or how do you handle the situation. And usually the series of questions is explain the normal situation, which is what we've covered in class. And then the next part will be what's different in this patient. And then I might have a series of differential diagnoses that they have to rule in or rule out given the backstory. And it's literally just logical common sense. And some of these actually run by- Which is not that common. It's not that common. So the first case that we did they, I have 40 students that only seven did not kill their patient. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this a really hard one? I've been doing a variation of that first one for a long time, and I've never had only seven survive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Then, then they get an incomplete, right? Because it's like, you killed a patient, you failed it, you know? Um, and so I literally, I went to my son's high school. He's in high school. One of his buddies was on the football team, not taking a lot of AP classes, if you know what I mean. And I asked him to do the case study. And he got it right. Because he was just like, oh, that's very logical, obviously. Whereas my students were freshmen during the pandemic. So all they did was control F, control F, control F. Look it up, mm. cheat, look it up, don't understand. It's just like the fastest way to get an answer that would give them credit, right? And so they never had to integrate their brain cells. Um, so... <clears throat> A lot of folks failed that first assignment. But I actually started out with an even easier assignment. Open note, narrated video with embedded quiz questions on the soda. Things like, when are my office hours? And it pauses over the thing that says, here are my office. Or, oh, I'm so round. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Here, do you want to just like grab this one? Here, I'll just get this. this one. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry. And then, um, you know, Apologies to people on the textbook. Like literally, it's right there. There's our textbook. Um, what are your learning outcomes? And like, click on all that apply. Like, it was so straightforward. But there was a little bit more about spec grading because Mark had said make sure they understand spec grading. And so, um, and literally, I had like for a D in the course, you need to do this. For a C, you need to do this. And again, I had like scenarios, and I'm like, what 
grade do you get given this scenario? And like, all I had to do is like, it's open, like right there. Can I ask a qu quick question? Yeah. Cause you mentioned that like so many of them failed that more than usual. 40 was it, were those the questions they no. were getting wrong? You would think that they were getting quiz those questions wrong about the specs grading. No, most of them missed the very first question. What are my office hours? <laughs> Right. That is a, di a different problem. And I was telling my students, I'm like, they're going to be doctors. So paying attention to details is a crucial skill you need to learn. Also, they're not going to be doctors at this point. Right. right. Yeah, that's great for sure. And so, yeah, and absolutely, a bit, the ones that missed, there was a smattering all across the board mm -hmm. that they missed. So it wasn't like one like specs grading one was hard. No, they just, they're used to clicking and being able to go back and correct it because on canvas quizzes if you do it quickly enough you can go back and get the right answer and trick canvas and on lockdown browsers so they have figured this out yeah oh yeah they figured that out like within a week it's like very straightforward yeah yeah it's it's terrible so um, yeah, they'll figure it out. They'll spend more time trying to figure out how to beat the system than learning information. But the, but the, the yeah. problem that we're describing about uh, <clears throat> this is the pandemic uh, group, this is the pandemic group. And not that I don't want to go in that direction too yeah. much, but the reason that I even considered doing this was because I had a terrible screen in the group. Yeah. Devastating. It was, it was it's horrible, just, right? It was horrible. horrible. I no, it's not you. But anyway, I thought that maybe by doing this, I could diminish some of the pressure. Mm -hmm. So here's what's happening with my class. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I renamed uh, this specs grading in my class hybrid contract grading. Oh. Hybrid gives me an out, and contract lets me let them choose the grade they want. So the first day of class, I said, <clears throat> You can choose an A, B, or C. And I said, here's what you got to do for an A. Here's what you do for a B. Here's what you do for a C. Right. And because I teach a class that is a critical thinking and writing, it's a liberal arts kind of thing, there's no right or wrong. It's just a question of whether they're getting it. Same with mine. Well, it's, it could be. the tr It could so be. There's some math. So yeah, you can't color it. But there's a lot of yeah. <laughs> so, but here's, of shades of red. But here's the way it was misunderstood. I had 20 students, 19 wanted A's. Yeah, of course they did. And the only one that wanted to be was, she came to me after, she says, I'd love to have an A, but I'm buried alive in my other classes. This would be a break for me. I said, do whatever you want. Which that, that is the idea. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, right. Except what I suspected might happen, I think did happen, and that is they thought it was guaranteed. Oh. They thought it was a guaranteed A. And I said to them in the deck that I showed them, I said, here's, yeah. here's how to ensure that you get the grade you contracted for. Yeah. It's simple. <clears throat> uh, master the syllabus. Don't miss class. Don't be late to class. Do your assignments. Don't miss them. Schedule frequent conferences with me. And the most important thing of all, show me improvement over the semester. If you do all of those things, you'll get your grade. I said, that seems easy, right? Yeah. Until I, and I forgot, and a shame on me, was that there's always somebody who forgets to put their assignment up. Yeah. That's a death sentence in my class. Yeah, mine too. It's an automatic zero, but I've been doing that for decades. If you miss the upload deadline, that's on you. And I even tell them, I'm like, don't come to me with your computer. So what do you, but here's the thing. What do you do with it in a specs grading situation? Um, I mean, I had thought, okay, I'm just going to keep a demerit list. I'm going to, I'm gonna, okay, you did, I'm just going to keep track of it, right? And so, and what I was going to do was, I said, well, if you wanted an A, there's 700 points total that you can get a perfect score by 700 points. So every assignment's 100 points. And it's just 100 or zero? Like it's, you don't grade them. No, I grade them. Now, that's why I wanted to ask yeah. you about the pass fail. Yeah, I can, yeah, I'll take away yeah. But here's the thing yeah. I can't do pass fail. This is a required class. They want to grade. Yeah, yeah. Administration. Yeah, I still give them a grade, yeah. but the assignment is pass fail. Yeah, here's how you do that. Here's, a, here's so that, that's, the, that's the whole core yeah. of the specs grading 
is that you're not rating every assignment to living with a particular score. It's a zero or it's a hundred. That's it. Yeah. That's going to freak them out more. No, it does, but it's really lovely. So I do <laughs> like 10 clinical case studies. For an A, they have to pass eight of them. For a B, they have to pass seven. For a C, they have to pass six. Which gives them B. The options the of options. the time is to pick, right. too, that right. he talks about. There's one thing that they have to know by rote memory, so that is a proposed book test. And if they get a 9 out of 10 on it, they get it's an A. If it's 8 out of 10, it's a B. If it's 7 out of 10, it's a C. And they have to meet every hurdle to get the next higher grade. So, yeah, it's... So, okay, so here's an example. So they don't hand it in. That's one of your two that you get to schedule. Well, and that's the other important part with this pass-fail thing, because mm -hmm. you, is you build in the... You get some... Version of reviews. Yeah, so you, you, you've done. You get two for the semester. Yeah, I give them two grace cards they can use for handing an assignment again, like redoing it correctly, and then they're learning what it takes to take an A. Or if they, they you're only allowed three absences in my class, and so if they need an extra absence, they can use a grace. Card. Okay, so here's what I don't understand. Michelle? Mark, don't well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just asking if you are Michelle. You want to introduce yourself, Michelle? Yes. I'm sorry, what did you say? You want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I really apologize for being late. I was like, yeah, that's a new building. So yeah, I'm lost. Yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to ask Eddie where it was going to be, and then Ellen emailed me today to ask where it was. Too, yeah. Like, no, it no, it is a brand new building, so I understand. And there's no room that we're just the one. Yeah, it's right below. It's so tiny, tiny. Yeah. I really apologize. Michelle, is your colleague in my department? Oh, excellent. So my, my question was, that you that 40% of them is their first grace card? Literally. And I told them, I said, go slow. You give them grace cards. Yeah, give them two grace cards, which are redos, do-overs. So 40% of my class had to use their grace card on the stupid syllabus quiz. Okay. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Doesn't surprise right. me. No. But here's what I... I here's the best part. Ten of them drop the class. That's great for you. Yeah, I mean, that was very sad. This, I apologize. I don't think this is not technically a requirement for inspection, right? Yeah. You're going to make everything pass fail. You have to give it. You make everything pass fail. There has to be some way where they can redo something. And you set that bar on the first one. So I'll yep. tell you what, that 40%, yeah. either they drop or they're like, oh shit, I got to like do that. Right. Okay, so what happens in a case where they've used their grace cards yeah. and they fail yeah. an assignment? And they fail the redo, and they ask for an A. What do you do? They don't Two, get it. They don't get they it. They go back. What yeah. what grade do they get? They, well, see, it's, see, look at my this, look at my. Okay, so so like here, here, yeah. here, this is yeah. <clears throat> this this is why I I'm I'm giving my bias now. Yeah. This is why I don't like contract grading, yeah. but I like specs grading because right. contract grading, unless you do it very carefully, it's really unclear with what happens. Like they miss this thing for an A. What does that mean? They fail whatever. Yeah. And with specs grading, if you build it right, it's built sequentially. So like yeah. if you didn't meet all the stuff for the A, but you just missed one thing, you're probably at a B. Yeah. If you missed two or three things, maybe you're at a C. I have to do is just specify it. Yeah, you just specify that. Yeah. So here, let me um I'm not gonna go through this. This was an example I used in um sorry. Do, 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 do. Whoops. Um example I used in the spring one, but just as an example. Um, and this is, I know you brought yours, yours too, but so in this class, there were like different modules, very similar to what it was just explaining, um, with the case studies, like they had to do this many modules, but you can see, like, if you were going for the A, like, man, I was really trying to get 11 and I just couldn't get that 11th one, right. Well, it's not like suddenly you failed, then you're probably at that B level. You just drop down one? Yeah. You just drop yeah. Down one. So you just and, and you, it. and you build the grading like this and yeah. and that's that is i think we talked about this a little when we met in the spring yeah. one of the things that is that you have to be more careful with specs grading than you do with sort of normal grading where you're just going to average all these percentages is you have to think about what are the outs like there was one i i asked you because i was looking at yours i'm like what if somebody fails the syllabus quiz do they get an f because that was what it said on the thing and again that's perfectly fine as a policy but just think about that and like Am I okay with if they can't pass this, they get an F for the class? And you no. said yes, which yes. is fine. If you're going to be a doctor and you can't do an open note, open quiz narrated. And right. So, so and again, that's not, that was not critical of your design. 
but you have to ask yourself those questions. Yeah. The one you just, the one you just said. You have to hold that. Line. No, but you have to ask yourself the question. Like you set up your grading system, and the question you just asked. Well, what if somebody did this one and failed it, and did the redo and failed that? What do I think is fair? What do I want to happen? Do you want them to get a B? Do you want them to fit? And you build that into your system. You have to you have to think about all this ahead of time and kind of watch for the loopholes. No, I think you can say, this is, right, you can just say, you know, I've been mulling it over. Let's do a grace on this. Let me be more specific because there seems to be some misunderstanding. And then you're a couple of people, you know, ask yeah. for clarification. Yeah. And I just yeah. Say, yeah. So let me clarify how this is going to work. And, and I would also say, and I've, I have done like this is philosophically, I think it's not fair to the students if you present them something to then make the class harder. Yes. But if you, if you present it as like, Hey, there was some confusion about this. Let me clarify. And because there was some confusion, I'm making this thing easier. Like, yes. cause none of you were going to get an A based on these specs because I think you didn't understand it right. Yeah. And rather than say it's impossible for everyone to get an A, I'm altering, but like make it clear that you're being nice and kind of giving them grace. Yes. That's a lot easier for them to take and they and they like appreciate it too, but then you can like lay this out more clearly. Like here's why you weren't gonna get an A and here's what things are gonna look like going forward. Yeah, the <clears throat> I tell them that that's right it turns into negotiation that's why i don't do it that's why i like spec screen that's, that's, that's why when my in my syllabus there will be no negotiations about grades yep. that's why they got a master syllabus so here's one of my assignments you can see how specific i am with what they need to do and i broke it down after um, sort of formatting i have to read this can, can i, I keep it oh. sure so, yeah, it's like, that. Right. So here's thank you. I don't know how to use the button. It's just and I'll figure it out. Yeah. It's I use it in my phone. So I am extremely specific in what I want them to do. And that is that is Yeah, this is one of my case studies. Exactly. Uh, and that was one of the things that I had up there. Like this is a lot of work to set up on the yeah. front end. Because you have and I I showed some examples in the spring of like, hey, here's one where I thought I'd been specific enough. And then people turned this thing in and I'm like Oh, I wasn't specific enough. Yeah. Um, and you, and that's what I'm afraid of. I yeah, mean, that's but what. Well, but, but then, but then, a, a remember to give yourself grace. Like you, you screwed up, and you did, okay. Actually, the student didn't really turn in what I wanted them to, but they met the way I thought it was. Okay, they get credit. I make a note to myself for the next, next semester. Year. I need to clear up and stuff. Like exactly. you're not going to get it all perfect the first time. And you have you to can't do it later. not camp. Uh, so, but so the different. So, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing from you here, which is distinctly different than the way I've set it up, is that I'm still accumulating points on every assignment. I'm still sort of like cr using the crutch of the old gray, where you're saying, no, it's just a hit it or miss it on every assignment, and if you missed it, you have a chance to redo it. So. Yes. Absolutely. What I will say is, I, it's not that I'm saying what you're doing is wrong. Like everyone can tell if they want grading to do whatever. I've done all sorts of tight grade, half spec grading, half traditional. What I'm saying is, if you're trying to get all the benefits of spec grading, one of the huge benefits is not having to figure out all those points and stuff like but that. But will this even work for the kind of class I'm teaching? Yes, I, mean, I think so. She's, she's doing an essay physiology. I do film production. Well, yeah. yours I can see eight, one and one always equals two, no matter what semester no, you're no, in. Not, no way. Not in physiology. They're shades gray. Patients are going to react. Well, and, and I think here's the other thing. Like, biology you're, you're, is not, unfortunately, it's not one or two. You know, zero or one. It's There's a lot of... I think that there. Are, I think this is something that it's more intuitively obvious how it works for things like in the hard sciences. Yeah. Um, and there's uh, one of the links I had up that again I'll send to Adam. You can send out to him. It's registered. Um, is by a math professor. And there's some things that he's explaining how he uses. It's like, yeah, that's really easy when like you can grade the thing and it's right or wrong. Right. But you can translate to anything. And I, th I think maybe what we're getting hung, hung up on is. There can be subjectivity, but you have to be clear about what you're being subjective about. Yes. So I'm going to give okay. Okay. like 10 mics in here. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Wait. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I should give you this one because I'm not sure that works. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, I'll have yep. yeah, I'm okay. Are you all right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I teach system engineering, planning, system integration tests. I mean, how to design, plan for, yes. and develop systems. But what I'm focused on, because um, we also have set up to where when they go and complete some of our classes, they automatically get the certification with INCOSI, the International Council of System Engineers, as a... Um, system engineering professional. So there's already spelled out requirements. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's what I do all the time is I, you know, in designing systems, you spell out the requirements, the specs, yeah. and you flow those down throughout the system hierarchy to all of the things that make up your system. Yeah. But in the case studies I go and do, it's one of them that I use is design a new smartphone. You're designing this new smartphone, put together your project plan. I don't care exactly how they go and do it. What I'm focused on is can they go and apply some of the key concepts that I want them to learn of how to put together a plan, how to make sure that what they have identified ties to their vision for their system. And they have various options that they can do. And I don't care about that which particular approach they chose as long as they had a rationale for it and that it's reflected in their project plan. So I tell them, you know, these are the things I do want to go and see. I'm not scoring them on whether they chose this element or you know updating this or that or that whatever but it's got to be reflected in what you said your goal was for your project that you're doing for updating your smartphone and what you're doing in your plan yeah and that's that's a great example of something that is there's a degree of subjectivity right you're looking at and saying like do i think what they chose does reflect does reflect what was in their plan and these choices reflect that. And that's, you're making some expert judgment there mm -hmm. to a degree. But you can still, you can put that as a spec, so you can still require mm -hmm. subjectivity and judgment, but you're telling them what you're looking I, for. I'm saying these are the things I am looking for. I don't care necessarily, I mean, I don't care whether you laid out a two year schedule, a year and a half, a year, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But you do care they laid out a schedule. So that's- yes. yes, right. So, let me, let me come. so think, think of it like a rubric. Yeah, like think all, the, all the things are on the rubric, but here, here's, here's where it's different. All the things are on the rubric, and it's either yes, they did this, or no, they didn't. And if they get a no on anything, you're done. You're done. You're done. One no. One no. It's oh. awesome. If they if they don't do that, I go and, you know, we did one of the homeworks, and there were one or two that didn't do parts of it. And I said, this was in the instructions of what I expected to yeah. go and see. I did not see them. Now, yeah. if you want to, res you know, if you want to update and resubmit, you can to get some points back. Yeah. Perfect. And that's the beauty of it, too. They got it. They got it. to redo it. And that's something, too, like, again, this would be a variation on this, because you could say, like, hey, you're going to get a chance to redo every assignment if mm -hmm. you want, but any assignment you redo. You're not going to get, you're not going to get full score. If you to redo three of them, then you can't get it. Right, you can right. you can build whatever shape of framework you yeah. want. So I know it's scary when well, you're saying like, wait, but if they get one, but, yeah, but exactly. that's it. You're setting the bar here. You're saying right. this is the bar I think you need to do. Here's here's the thing that made me blow up. I would say that in the seven or eight years that I taught this class, that I have seventy five percent functional. Work. I mm -hmm. agree with you 100%. Oh, what about my your gosh. student that I cannot can. write an ID mm -hmm. yeah. and set up a thesis statement? Mm -hmm. So that's your rubric. Everybody write a mm -hmm. thesis statement. Um, I, if they was doing that, I would say, you know, I, I want to see a thesis statement. I want to see these things. Yeah. And I would probably give them, you know, here's links to see what should be in there. I mean, I in my classes, I teach if I'm wanting a vision statement for your project. I actually teach, here's what it ought to be, and here's right. kind of what they look like. Right. Here's a template you can kind of use. Exactly. Um, yeah, a thousand so. percent. So if you see mine, like, literally, it's like, I want it, Times New Roman font, single spaced, one inch margins. No, today, oh my gosh, today, out of 40 students, 14 did not complete the formatting checklist. I was done. 14 incomplete. I don't even have to read the rest of it. Now, if they want to use a grace card, they can use a grace card because we went over the answers today. 
So they'll have it correct. But when they use a grace card, then they know what A level work entails. You will use Times New Roman font. You will single space. You will have reasonable sized paragraphs. And so that's part of this too is like, what is a communication? If you start giving them, like, well, this is too hard, I'm not going to set the bar right at the beginning, you're not going to get to that level. Right. Part of the idea of this is like, you should expect some of them to fail on the first one. Yeah. You set the bars here, and now they know where that bar is. There. Right. There was a lot of groaning when I said for I had this up on the doc cam and I highlighted the um some the most common errors in just the formatting. I mean, it's like control A times New Roman one inch by like it takes you 30 seconds to do that. And if you didn't do that, I don't have the respect to you don't have the respect for me to turn it in correctly. I'm not going to read it. 40. And usually 50, but well, so traditionally, I have about a third of the class that gets A's, maybe another 40 to 45% that gets B's, and the rest are C's, D's, and F's. No, that's traditional grading where I spent hours like pouring over him. I have not done a full semester of specs grading, but. No, we don't contract in my class for grades at all. What I tell them is to get an A, you have to do that many case studies. To get a B, you have to do that many case studies. Because well, the they're... Well, usually it's specified. Like, they sign it. I don't want to get an A. I'm signing up for an A. Mm -hmm. I think that's But this is, this is this part, like, it's partly a language. Right? Yeah. I think this is partly... Where the frustration frustration is is they think that they sign that and now they get a hey and i know you told them like we well, have to do all these things this is i'm not giving you anything you have the semester yeah. to do this stuff and at the end i'm going to look at did you complete this many okay great it's an a yeah, yeah. satisfactorily correct no 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 pass yeah oh, oh, yes this is in canvas that's the choice you mark some later yeah that's right and I only allow them two redos, two grace cards. And then the whole class can earn a grace card also on that one test. If they all get one part of it correct, then the whole class. So it's a little bit of a game, but um, yeah, I know. It's super fun. And that peer pressure, um, and it's, I literally in the syllabus, I give them the first part of that closed book quiz. And like, if the whole class gets a hundred on that one part, Everybody gets a grace card. I've done that for over 12 years. Never, ever, ever have, have and for other classes, it's a 3% bump on their GP, on their final course grade. So like half a letter grade. For this class, it's an extra grace card. And I've never in my 12 years of doing it have ever had a whole class get that part right. And it's in here, open note, literally for a month. The first thing we do is what are the four starling forces? What is their force? What is their magnitude? What is their direction? And every day, and every year between 40 to 50 students, I've never had 100% of the class get that right. But I've had more of them get it right with the peer pressure than before when I didn't have the peer pressure. So I do think it's a good tool to peer pressure them into doing that. Let me ask you this about um, your, what you've taught this class few times, what is your usual final day breakdown? Average? Yeah. Um, it's gone from, I see least. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I would say if a third of the class is functionally illiterate, that sounds hot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if a third of them are functionally illiterate, that's like 33%. So you're saying basically 67% yeah, of the class are functionally illiterate. Yeah, I have a stack of That is, students are coming from school incapable of doing things that you expect. Arjun students to achieve and it's primarily their written skills. So much so that the writing center at you know, the school's writing center about three years ago told me new requirements. Incoming freshmen, no matter who you are, where you are, you know, it was never a case. And then you know, junior, they had to do the same thing composition class in your major. Yeah, that's gone away now though. Yeah.
because no, no other than my class, <laughs> like no other majors were doing that composition. The writing in the major thing, it's gone now. So, so here's what I would say. Is, yeah. is first off, I, I would actually somewhat just disagree. Like I feel like I, I feel like this, the students I've seen are not as bad as writing the set we're giving out to. But let's say that is the case. You need, like, I think you need to, like, the problem with that isn't inspect grading and contract right. grading or whatever. You need to figure out what, with the students you're seeing and getting, and what you want them to get out of the class, what is it reasonable to get out of them? What do you, it's like, if they leave your class and they're still functionally illiterate. But I'm not right. I'm well, not. But, but you're you're having them write in the class. Right, but it's like, uh, if they can't write, Asking to what my job is not to teach them how to write and how to think about the topic that they're asking to write. Now mm -hmm. I'll give them, you know, I'll give them some tips, but I feel like a junior and senior who doesn't love to think, they're asking the students to write critically thought out essays that they can't construct. That's not my problem. Well, it kind of is though. So, like for me, it's. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If that's what you are grading them on, they yeah. not be able to do it. Like your option is either say, well, you're all going to fail, or I'm going to have to teach you how to write. Like, yeah. I thought it's film history. Yeah. So I returned the first paper and I said, when the next day I said, all right, today we're not learning film history. I'm going to teach you guys how to write. Yeah. You need to learn it so that you can write your next paper well. So one of my, it went. One day of just, here's how you yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Was that my poor job? No, but I wanted them to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it's kind of a cop out to say, well, they can't do this and I'm not going to teach it, but they need to be able to do They're it right. in my class. Mm -hmm. So one of my checklist items is, because these are going to be doctors, you have to be clear, concise, and correct with little tangential information. And then they have to, and then I give them what that means. So on my checklist, it's like, you need to write three sentences to describe this mechanism. And the ones that have correctly formatted and I go on to read are phenomenal. They're A-level work off the bat, as opposed to like seeing an increase in improvement. Like you do this, you will get an A. And they are doing it because they have that guidance. And I tell them, this is what you need to do. You need to write, like you said, your thesis statement or your schedule. And then it's literally, you go down that checklist. Did you omit something? Then you didn't pass the, the case. So it's really the ones that have been turned in are so much better than the junk I was getting last year this time. And it does, as Mark pointed out, take a lot of my effort. I do a lot of, do not use the word it, because I don't know what it is, especially when you had like five nouns ahead of time, you know, or so I do a lot of that and that's in the checklist. Well, and, and another thing where the clarity on that can help is like, you think about what am I looking for in, in the writing? Yeah. You put that in your, yeah. in your specs, like your essay must have an opening paragraph. Yes. Statement. And you, like, yeah, right. that's what you were looking for and want out of them. Tell them, like, yeah. part of the thing, I, I think a lot of people, I'm not saying, but like, in conversation about grading, particularly students, they think you're trying to trick them. Right. Um, like, you know what? I hate failing people because I know right. they're going to complain about it. Right. And I would like to see them like. Yeah. I'm trying to give them the tools to succeed. If there's something you're looking for, you lay that out in the specification. Mm -hmm. This is what I want, and that's part of the teaching. Them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't need to spend five weeks doing it, but if you tell them, "Hey, when you turn in your essay, I want this, this, this." Right. Should I have a third? Yeah, great. So make that rubric. You did it or you didn't do it. So just yeah, just say it's you did it or you didn't. Correct. To get credit for this right. assignment, yeah, you did everything they were asked on the rubric. Uh -huh. There's one thing that's missing on that rubric because they didn't do it. It's human nature. It's, okay, here's here's it's yeah. human nature where they're gonna where they're gonna look at and say like, yeah, good oh, enough. I can get like sixty percent of the points by. Yes. Current rubric does it says to get a four. Yeah. Yeah. This. To get a three. This. Right. To get two. This. What? And so maybe four here and two there, one there. Right, but how annoying is that to grade? I know that's annoying to grade. So maybe you say, okay, you know what? For an A, whatever your third level is, if you do at least the third level, you have passed it. So you don't have to have 
like this insanely high fourth level, but you're not going to tolerate ones. You're not going to tolerate twos, get the threes. And I get threes in my rubric, my checklist, whatever is for what I would expect for a three on a one through four grading scale. And I get a lot of students who will do that four level work. And you're like, woohoo, because they know the minimum that's required and some will go above and beyond that. So your pass fail would be whatever's on your third tier for your rubric. That's your pass. And if you don't do at least that, I'm so tired of getting to the fifth question and it's like a three word answer and it's wrong. But hey, they put something down. So they submitted something and they expect to get points for that. And you're like, no, you didn't complete it. It's complete garbage. So you don't accept the ones or the twos. You only accept the threes. And it's so much easier to grade because it's good. Like it's, it's good easier, stuff. But the fact is it's good. That's, so I, I think yeah. is, it should be easier to grade. If the way you're doing your contract grading is making things harder, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It, but it also, it's not just about making it easier for you. It makes the work better. And yes. This is the level I expect. Yes. Yeah, knock out everything but the three. Exactly. Usually, don't get a three on one of those things. Then you're done. If they don't get up to the three, you do have that chance of redoing the assignment to be the American level. Yes. And also, the amount, not every single assignment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you will have so much regrading. Yeah. Yeah. Do not do infinite redos. Give them, like, I do two grace cards. And then what I ended up doing with my first assignment where only seven didn't kill their patient, there were like another um, 20 or so who killed their patient, but not as badly as like some of the other ones. And so, yeah, they were mostly, they would have petered along a little bit longer. They wouldn't have been killed instantaneously. Let me put it that way. So if you didn't, so then I changed it to, if you didn't kill your patient, you got an extra grace card. If you were some of the 20 that you didn't instantaneously killed your patient, at least you are kind of thinking and you still killed them. So I will have that as a pass for now. And those that really just absolutely annihilated their patient, like you just didn't complete. So I gave them grace. That was the part of like, give a little grace on the first one. So they get used to it. But now it's like 14 that I don't even have to grade because they didn't even bother to see if it was single spaced. You know, it's like, and, that, and the okay. other thing I'll just know practically putting that stuff is like the first stuff you look for because it, yeah. it doesn't pass, doesn't pass when you need to do a review. You want to give them like, here's why. You need right. To if it's that stuff they're not doing, I kind of, I like your phrase about like, you're not even showing me any respect to like do this basic thing. Right. Two-year-old could do. Right. Um, I'm not going to bother reading through this and give you, but like if they did everything else right, then like, oh, you got to this part and like, you really did this wrong, but you were trying on this. Yeah. See where. I'm going to give you detailed feedback. And I do. This is wrong there, so you can go correct it. That's exactly right. right. So I'm not going to waste my time if you want to waste it. If you want to waste it. Right. Here's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, you tell me, is that a B? Is that a C? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. One means C. There you go. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, it's life changing. Like, once it clicks into place, yeah. And so, here's, yeah. 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 Right. Now, here's the other thing with my grace cards. Yeah, I think three is kind of a smaller number. Like, I like a large number. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't need to know that answer like that. Maybe attendance is part of the ABC schedule. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you need to have something for every level. Yeah. No. No. So what you do is you offer, let's say you offer one grace card. But you, and so you're going to have students that are going to use the, your grace card to get that C and you're fine with that. 
But then there are students that are not a pain in your butt and don't do the grace card. You want to reward them. So that's when they get like the plus grade. So for me, it's a, it can be a redo, or if they don't need a redo, then they can save it and they can get the plus. So if they had a B, they can get a B plus. And if they had two grace cards left, they can go from a B plus to an A minus. So that's how they get your plus minus grading in there. Yeah. You can. So I don't use grace cards. I, yeah. I do that. The assignment they do, they can do, but they have a limited time. Well, and so mine is set up a little differently. Yeah. I don't have deadlines. Oh, yeah. I have deadlines, weekly you deadlines. You can turn it up to one thing. It can be the assignment or it can be a redo of the assignment. But if you start having to redo a lot of assignments, then you're running out of time to turn into the other projects. So, mm -hmm. so there, there's all sorts of variations on this. You figure out what works well for your class. So mm -hmm. something where you only have three assignments. My gut instincts are probably one to redo all of them if they if they do. You don't have them like that's probably what I would do. Well, that's not right. But they, mm -hmm. right. But if you but maybe you say you, you get two redos. And by the third one, you should if you already use two redos, you shouldn't have to redo on the third yeah. one. And if you didn't have to redo one of the earlier ones, you can like, Yeah. That's reasonable. There's yeah. Lots of, there's yeah. variation on how to how mm -hmm. to do it. You just have to think about like we should go back to you, like what makes sense to you like for someone to if they hit threes on all three of these essays do you feel like that deserves an a if it does then okay that's a good i got mm -hmm. that figured out. if they did two out of three does that feel like it deserves a B? Yeah. yeah and so then then also if i'm a student i'm going for a b if i did those first two correctly i'm like man i'm really swamped i'm just not going to do the third one because i'm happy with the b they can do it now you have to be okay with that mm -hmm. Okay, then that, then that system doesn't work for you. Yeah. You need to figure out something. And that's why I, yeah. Maybe you mm -hmm. need to pass all of these to get a B or an A, and the A has to do something. Like have better attendance. Yeah. Or something okay. easy for you. You have, to, you have to think about each of those levels and say, like, somebody could do this and they would get this grade. Am I okay with that? Mm -hmm. And there's not a right or wrong answer. It's whatever it makes sense for you. I'll go back to the yeah. question I have just when I look at yeah. it. So if they fail the syllabus quiz, even if they did everything else right the whole semester, they get an F. I'm like, yes, I'm, that's what I want. Okay. But you, but you think about it. Yeah. Sure but I know. did conscientiously think about it. I'm like, these are pre-meds, and if they can't do an open book, open note quiz, like, that's just not right. But then also for, like, the A's. So this is what I do for my A's. Um, a final exam assignment, or they can create their own case study. So make them be creative. So for an A, you could say, okay, you've done these three assignments. If you want an A in the class, now you create a writing assignment and answer it. Um, See what I'm saying? And then not everyone's going to do it. So you're not going to have like 50. I'm not going to have 50 to grade because there's going to be plenty of kids that are like, I'm good with the C. I'm good with the B. I'm not going to do an, give her extra work. But to differentiate the Bs from the As, do something more creative. Just so you know, we're right to the end. Oh, sorry. To leave. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. This room's available until uh, two thirty. Okay. We can't extend okay. the conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine being on talking, but I was going to just say that the VR team. So I want to yeah. real quick. This thing I gave you. This is not. This was something I kind of came up with. Like walk you through the process of thinking about this, and I think this going through in this way might have helped alleviate mm -hmm. some of those. Um, so you have your, and I think and, your class is perfectly yeah, situated to do this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Who would really respond well to spec grading, the flexibility of it. Yeah. Did you get my syllabus? Did you get? Okay. I mean, just uh, FYI, but. It's not all past, it's like A that goes through the best way. Like, um, um, there's, there's so all right. different ways to the goals, but you kind of think through each one, and at that differentiation, that's where you need to go. Demerits, like, demerits. Like, like, well, yeah. Well, so, like, the one, like, well, they only did two, so I'm just not to be here, I'm not okay with that. Right. Okay, and that goes to the you set up your set. There is no grace. You think that you have right. a class that you have done all three. Yeah, I like it. Whether or not they pass, or you didn't like yes. you figure that out. No, that's perfect. Yeah, right yeah I think you're right on track. This is, I think, a really Doing that. important start. I would and thank you for your service. I see here. What's the thing about this? If you're passing this class, B minus, like just passing, what do I think that requires? You know, to differentiate, like, if they did this, they at least get credit for the class. If they 
evergreen set, I don't think they can get credit for this set. Might start with that as your bar. Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes from. Like, okay, that's the bare minimum. What is the scene? I need to tell you this all time. Yeah. It's awesome. You're like, that's the Yes, and for everybody, like I for Mark, yeah, <laughs> we did. Yeah. Oh, this is really smart. Different than what I would have done. Yeah. Oh, and if you're like walking through the various possibilities, like yeah. what if they do this? Like, yeah, and it works. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the syllabus is ninety eight percent done. Yeah. This was great, but then there were a couple of things you talked about. Oh, I didn't think about that. What is something? Mm -hmm. like, well, let's right. keep this thing away. Exactly. Somebody just need that extra eyes. The other thing I'll say, I'm like, those things are great. In teaching. I, one of the things I like about talking about this is it's pretty disciplined in yeah. the sense of, I have no idea about the actual like details of what you're teaching, like your specs, sort of that. Like, I don't know if this is actually right for what they should know, but I can tell you whether it makes sense as an assignment. Right. Like, right. So you can, you know, I would, I would encourage you to shoot some. Well, you know, equals is still fine. Yeah. In any field, you just see how they're structured. No, you're going to make me sit on the back. Please do. Please do. So, accomplishments are so strong that we need to see what it's doing. Well, no, because the A, they'll do the three and then have them do some creative something to get that A. Well, well yeah. Like, yeah. You can set your bar for A really high. Yeah. Set your bar for four. Yeah. Yeah. Get all the money I have. There's nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's their that's their immaturity, not your course design. But like you set that bar high, the best students want to make that mm -hmm. work. Yeah. But already my students so low that my student could do a work like, oh, I can just have that students and travel today anyway. Yeah. Like that's more work. Yes. So that's my, my, my own definition. Yeah. A doesn't do this, B doesn't do this. Yeah. You want to train. I think you can chance to train them. It's semester. Well, that's the, other, that's the other thing where I don't like contracts. Yeah. Maybe if someone who started out like, I'm going to do this in this semester, I'll go for the B and they're doing great work and actually they're totally down the A. Yeah. Well, that's not slightly enough anymore. Yeah. You guess that training them. Well, I just don't like the idea of specifying it at the start. Like, yeah. Like, here's what the thing is for each. I'm going to look at what you teach. And you can be yeah. up. I, And it I, also. Mm -hmm. Here's how many modules you can Here's how many modules you can mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and here's, again, the bar for each of these rates. You kind of make the bar. But, like, they don't ever have to tell me I'm going for anything. I'm going to think and count it. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. like, there's never any contract that you can stop. No, but this is No. Yeah. Not having to disempower the project. Yeah. Then yeah, give them like the only one give them a chance. Out. Give them a chance to create once you once you've figured out your system, like whatever's gonna be the rest of the semester, you clarify and um and you kind of guys will make your yeah. easier. Mm -hmm. 